the market on Pornhub, it's primarily male and it's male driven. And they're leaving out 50% of genders, which is women. And women do seek out porn, but they often can't find what they're looking for. So that's what I do is I create porn that's geared more towards women and couples. Um, this is Shruti. I'm your host for Chai Pani Conversations today. Uh, Chai Pani Conversation is a fun interactive web series that we've just started where uh, we have interesting conversations with really interesting people uh, four times uh, a week. And the fun part is that the whole conversation is co-created with the participants. So it's not limited to me and the speaker, but all of us putting in our thoughts together, our questions together and uh, and adding to the conversation all right so today we have a rather unconventional topic usually we're always discussing business and politics and media and news but today uh, we're going to be talking about porn and uh, um, and we really just got lucky where uh, because Jackie agreed to do this session with us I just randomly reached out to her on Instagram and she agreed uh, she's been directing and writing in the adult entertainment industry for how much five years now Jackie uh, actually, since 2011, so <laughs> nine years. Nine years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Jackie, can you, can you tell us how did you get into the industry? I, so I worked in corporate America for, gosh, up until I was in my 30s. And I watched a lot of porn. And one of my friends sent me a link to a porn and he said, you're not going to believe that, that they're producing porn like this. It was high quality. There was a script. Uh, the people were very attractive. It was well done and well produced. So when I Googled the company, I found out that they were looking for screenwriters. Mm -hmm. And as a joke, my friend was like, you should submit a script. It'll be funny. So I submitted the script hmm. to the contest and I won. And then they invited me to be part of the production of the script I wrote. So when I got there, I fell in love with the industry immediately. And before long, they were asking me to write more. And then eventually they asked me to direct. So I had no plans of getting into the industry. I just fell into it. So, I mean, I, I never really thought I was going to be in porn long term. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't really worry until I started realizing it was going to be a full-time career. And how did I get around the taboo? I haven't yet. People still judge me. So I lead a pretty secretive life with the people, like my neighbors don't know what I do. Uh, only close friends know what I do. And obviously people that follow my career know. So I, I don't really uh, talk to a lot of people about my profession because people don't respect it, sadly. <laughs> uh, we get straight to it, okay? Like why do you think is porn important? Is it even important? I think it's important because at least in, in America, I will say, and I'm not, I don't know whether India is the same way, but there's so much puritanical views on sex in my country. And so a lot of people feel shame and embarrassment about their sexual desires. Whereas when they watch porn, they can explore their fantasies and explore what maybe turns them on in a way that's safe and not judged because it's in the privacy of their home or wherever they're watching it. Hopefully they're not watching it in public. But I think porn allows people to explore their sexuality in a positive way. And it's also a release for people uh, to pursue if they're not in a relationship or even if they are in a relationship. And it's also usually the starting point of sexual education for a lot of us. Yeah, which can be good and bad. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because also porn is so disgusting and gross most of the time. Why? <laughs> well, I think that people who think that it are usually watching it on tube sites. So a lot of the stuff that I do is, is not the grotesque over, you know, uh, larger than life sex. But I think for shock value, tube sites want people to click on a video. And you're not going to click on a video if it looks like two people are really having a great time and are in love because that's not exciting and interesting. Hmm. So in the age where everything is clickbait and everyone needs to click on things to get impressions and likes or whatever, there's more and more obscene or over-the-top porn. 
Hmm. Um, I don't really do anything like that, though. Thank God. <laughs> So, so how does it make commercial sense? Because like tube sites make that sort of porn is also because people demand that sort of porn, right? They demand that sort of, uh, uh, those sort of visuals and those sort of atrocities, if at all, on women, because that's how the demand is. And when you create porn, when you create uh, for yourself, like for the, the kind of porn that you would like to watch, uh, how do you make sure there is enough market for it? Or is there even enough market for it? There absolutely is a market for it. And I think what people don't realize is that the tube sites are not creating the porn. They're users that are uploading the porn illegally. So um, with regards to uh, the market on Pornhub, it's primarily male and it's male driven. And they're leaving out 50% of genders, which is women. And women do seek out porn but they often can't find what they're looking for. So that's what I do is I create porn that's geared more towards women and couples. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that those people should be ignored in their sexual desires just because a tube site is catering to men that just want to click on the most obscene, crazy thing that there is. Right. So what's the kind of porn women want? Well, okay. So I, I, when I say porn for women, I think the danger becomes... Uh, that women all have diverse sexual desires. So you and I might have very different opinions on what we think is sexy. But mm -hmm. when I say porn for women, what I mean is porn for people that want to see a connection, that want to see foreplay, that want to see a storyline and a buildup before the sex, that it's not just somebody walking in naked and two people fucking and nobody there's no established relationship. <laughs> right, right. They just walk in naked and have sex. Okay, that's fine for some people, but not for me. And it's not what I want to see. So it's mo there's more of a relationship. There's more of an intimacy. And you can tell that the woman is having pleasure and she's not faking her orgasms. So does it really happen on set where women are actually having pleasure or, or is it for the film? Well, so when I do it, I always tell the girls not to fake their orgasms. But as you know, you just mentioned on the tube sites, this there's so much over the top behavior and that's not real. So I tell the girls, look, I don't want you to have a fake orgasm. If you don't have an orgasm, that's fine. I want to see something real. And if what's real is you don't come, that's fine. So, but I, a couple of times, it's not common. But there are times on set where I have seen real orgasms and it was so exciting for me. <laughs> so tell us, how does it work for you in terms of process, right? From when you get an inspiration that, okay, this is the storyline that we should build on to having the final product. How does it work? So I, I mean, I draw from everything. I mean, typically they'll say, we want you to do a movie about um, a wife cheating on her husband or something. Mm -hmm. And I'll draw on real life stories I've been told, or maybe something I, I've seen in a movie before. And then I, first I cast before I write, because I like to know the strength that I'm writing to. So a lot of the performers may be really good at one type of personality. So I'll write for that performer, I'll write the script, and then uh, we do all of the production and shopping and buying props and buying food. We get to set and there's a whole list of things we have to do when we get to set. Like we have to do pictures and stills and then we run through the dialogue, then we shoot the sex. And the day, our days typically are about 14 to 16 hour days. And we shoot for two days, okay. each movie. And does it all happen legally? Yes. Yeah. Of course. It's legal in the state of California, which is where I am. It's legal in three states in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, uh, everything, you know, everyone that I'm shooting, everywhere that I'm shooting is legal. All right. And kind of, kind of uh, platforms that have been built up around it. So for example, a Beliza. Uh, which is a subscription platform. There are a lot of subscription platforms that have really quality content. And uh, I draw a parallel with subscription news media and the clickbait media versus a subscription porn and a tube porn uh, that we usually see. Uh, how do you think is the revenue uh, difference like? Do you think if you ever made content like a tube porn uh, or a porn hub, the kind of content that's been, the over-the-top content that's been there, like your revenues would spike? 
Um, are you saying, do I think that a subscription-based thing that's not based in tube sites, whether that would be popular? Yeah, would that work? Uh, absolutely. And I mean, it is working. People are doing it now. People will pay for quality because I think also with a tube site, you have to filter through so much crap to yeah. find what's good. Whereas when you're on a subscription site, you know what you're getting and you're paying for the quality. So that's, that is the difference. And there's a better user experience for people that want something a little different. Right, because I also think the cost of making films, the kind of films that you make, would be substantially higher than what a Pornhub usually uh, publishes. Maybe, I mean, yes and no, because Pornhub also is uploading content from legitimate studios that paid for that content. Okay. So yes and no. And I mean, I've seen my content on tube sites as well. So it's not that it doesn't happen, but it's just harder to dig through so much crap. Mm -hmm. And you, I mean, people, there's people that are uploading home videos and things like that, but then there's real studios whose work is being uploaded on there as well. But you're right. I mean, you're right. Uh, so I remember watching this one video by this guy, a TEDx that he gave about uh, 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 about how porn was, what porn was doing to his mind and how he stopped watching porn completely and what it does to us psychologically. I don't know, I guess a lot of people have seen it, it's got millions of views. Um, what do you think about it when you say you're also a staunch feminist? Like how do feminist and porn come in the same sentence? Well, I mean, I think... So obviously anything in life that you're doing to excess, whether that's alcohol, drugs, porn, sex, anything is going to be negative. So I understand that the effects of porn on your mind can be detrimental. I will say, um, before I answer the feminist question, I've been watching porn since I was 18 and I don't think it's changed anything with me psychologically. I still am turned on by the same things. So I think it's it's the user of the porn or the consumer of porn that might be the issue and not necessarily the porn itself. As far as being a feminist and working in porn, you know, a lot of people assume that every porn movie is what is this extreme over the top thing where the woman isn't enjoying it. But like that's not everything that's out there. And why not have a woman in the business creating content for women. Why not? Why can't women do that? Why can't women be sexual and be turned on by sex and create stuff for other women? 